All right, so we've, we've all heard all the, all the wedding movies. Rachel getting married, 27 dresses, you know, they, the list goes on and on. But now we have Jump in the Broom. How does it feel to be part of like this little secret genre niche that's always like a big movie to our communities? It's so much fun. I mean, doing a, a wedding movie is just a joyful thing. I mean, it comes with the drama that you see in the film and all the comedy that happens because of it. But there's something about weddings that are so magical and it's just this great celebration of two people and, 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 and sort of affirming their love in front of their family and friends and God. And, and that's why people love weddings and, and that's why wedding movies are so popular, I think. And last, this this character shares so many similarities to what we know about you. You know, Howard, uh, the, to working on Wall Street and, and doing that. When you got the script, was this like something that just like, okay, this is perfect for me. I gotta take this. It was crazy, man. I mean, you know, reading the script, it just I, I actually had to go back and research this writer to find out if I knew this person from <laughs> from DC or something. <laughs> but um, but it's just one of those moments in your career where you're just like, okay something felt right when I read it, you know, and although I had to go in and fight for this role anyway, you know, because mm -hmm. the director, although Salim and I have always wanted to work together on a film, you know, they still have to see it when they're used to seeing you play the bad guy and they're used to seeing you play these, you know, shoot 'em up army war movie type characters. Mm -hmm. They still want to know that you have the ability to to be loved and to be able to, to be romantic, you know, right, and, right. and all. They have to see it to believe it. So I went in there and, and I fought for this and, you know, here I am. Very, very thankful that I got this opportunity. Okay, and, and in the Ebony article I recently read, you, you spoke a little about the decisions, to, the courage to be able to say no to certain parts, you know. Um, how, how did this role play into to your career and, and your choices that you, that you Well, made? this role came after eight months of saying no. <laughs> you know, and, and I think that it, it does take a significant amount of courage, you know, to say no, because the truth of the matter is in our business, when you're done with a project, you're technically unemployed mm -hmm. until the next project, and you never know when that next project is going to come. However, um, you know, I felt like at that point in time, I had done enough bad guy roles, antagonistic roles, you know, villainous roles, where I felt like I would be doing a disservice mm. to the people that call themselves supporters and, and people that appreciate my work. Because after a while, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you eventually start running out of, of things to do and, and ways to make it interesting. Right, right. And people just hadn't seen me, you know, smile in a movie. You know, they see me <laughs> sneer. Yeah. You know, smile while I'm telling you I'm going to kill you. But, uh, but for me, it was important that, that I have this opportunity and... It couldn't have worked out better, you know. I mean, to share the screen with somebody who I've admired, mm -hmm. you know, Paula's work for years before I even got to meet her, mm -hmm. and then you know, having an opportunity to work together on Just Right, yeah. and not share, uh, not one scene, it's almost like you know, divine intervention. When when I found out she was coming on board, I was like, you know, yeah. eight months worth of nose was worth it. <laughs> I understand that you love each other and uh, that you're maybe even meant to be together. But I should warn you that sometimes life will really test you. Oh, well, we'll pass. I mean, Reverend mm -hmm. James, Jason was sent to me. He's my soulmate. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so sweet. But even a soulmate can really test you. <laughs> and I wanted to speak a little about uh, Paula and, and your career, but both of you guys, because I mean, not only is this a, a beautiful and a handsome cast, it's also a smart cast. I mean, you you went to Howard and, and did Wall Street. And you graduated, you know, magna cum laude from USC. You got Angela from Yale and Loretta from Brandeis. How much has education played a role in your success as actors and giving you these opportunities? I think I think education is very important, and I, I I promote it because I don't really believe it makes people smarter. I do. I believe that people can be smart with or without college if you go and you have a, a lust for learning and a mm. lust for life. However, going to college, it gives you discipline. It gives you deadlines. It mm. makes you have to be on point 
And, and I think that that's a really good thing for young people, especially as they go in to the working world. So whether it's acting or being a lawyer or businessman or what have you, I think what you learn in college, having to write papers you don't want to write, having to do things you don't want to do, exactly. you know? Read and having to turn it in on time. You know, it, it just makes you that much more able to function in the real world. And then outside of that, of course, I mean, I think it's great to be able to, the more knowledge you have as an actor, the better you can be because you have more understanding of many facets of life. Right, right. Well, I think everybody's going to enjoy uh, going to see this movie on Mother's Day. And we're going to keep following you in your careers and whatever you do. We love you on Breakout Caves. We love thank you on whatever you do. So, thank you so, so much. So thank you for your time. Thank Appreciate you so it. much. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Have a good thank one. You. Appreciate it.